Hey everybody, welcome to Ken Knows Gambling, and this is the third part of my three-part series on Texas Hold'em. I think this is probably going to be one of my favorite parts. Now, I'm having to go old school on the camera, so I'm hoping it doesn't slide or drip or fade or something like that. So, uh, I've got the camera facing me so I can see it. Uh, if it does. So anyway, hopefully we can be okay. So <clears throat> this one is about poker tells. Now I have to tell you a, a disclaimer first. Any poker tell, even if it's supposed to be a weak one, can be made to be strong. A lot of these poker players are good at what they do. Okay. And some, some things that are uh, seen to be weak, can be strong, and some things are just vice versa. They're meant to be strong, but they're weak. What you have to do when you're trying to read a person, you have to watch them over and over in a, uh, in a time period to find out which one it is. So i give you, a, a, for example, uh, generally sitting straight up, We'll use two cards here, you know, we'll pull back here, and let's say they're looking. They put them down, they got their hands over them, and they're, they're sitting straight, you know, they're looking right at you. That's generally a sign of strength, engagement. I'm engaging you, bite me, come on with it type of thing, without saying anything. They're sitting up in their chair, they may be holding the hand tight, and that generally means they have something good. Watch out for those guys. However, after watching 10 people, you may see eight of them, and that is correct. You may look at two others, and they do it. And when they do that, they're bluffing. So all these tells that I'm going to give you can be either way, okay? It's up to you to figure out which one they are, okay? And so as you're walk, watching a whole table, you have to be able to do this fa fairly quick. Now, I'm going to say this, and I really mean this. Obviously, you're watching this video because you want to pick up other people's tells. Well, boys and girls, you have tells too. Okay, a lot of these are just subconscious. And, uh, you know, you need to be more... Uh, aware of not showing your tails because believe me they're looking at you just much as much as you are looking at them so as we go over this it's more important for you not to have any tails than it is you seeing somebody else's tail hopefully that makes sense to you all right i'm gonna put these sort of in front of me I mean, you know, there's there's a whole list of them, and I, I just wanted to make sure I got the ones I really like uh, uh, in here. All right? So the first one, like I said, sitting straight. They've looked at the card. They're holding. They're pressing up tight. They're sitting up versus slouching, you know, sitting back in the chair, or just a too relaxed look. And that shows unengagement versus engagement okay so if they're very intent and they're you know looking straight and they're rigid and they're like they're engaged that could be a tell that they have something good but again just like I just said all these uh, a good poker player knows a lot of these tales and they'll purposely give them off to throw you off, okay? So you just got to watch, okay? The next one, eye contact versus looking around. If I'm looking at something, let's say, let's say I'm betting, right? And I grab my chips and I'm just, I mean, I'm engaged. I'm looking at your eyeball like, okay, come on, home dog. That's generally a sign of strength eye contact. It's not so much 
uh, you know, there's other ones where people splash the pot that generally means weak, but eye contact is what I'm, what I'm talking about here. When you are looking at somebody that generally shows strength versus, you know, you're looking around, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I won't look at you because usually when you're lying for, at somebody, you don't want to look them in the eyeball. You know, you want to look somewhere else, look at the top of their head, look at their chest, look somewhere else. You know, that's generally the sign of weakness when you when you can't look at somebody. Okay, this is a lot of reason why these poker guys wear sunglasses. They don't want you seeing their eyeballs and what they're looking at. Okay, uh, the next one. Now, this is this is subtle stuff right here, but when you have something good, Okay, uh, your body starts reacting to it. All right. And generally to calm yourself down, people need to soothe themselves. You may catch them just rubbing their hand, rubbing their finger. You know, maybe they do this or, or, or I'm going to get a little closer to the camera if I can. Maybe they, uh, not seductively like that, like, hey, baby. That's not what I meant. But like they're rubbing the inside of their gums or their cheek. They're, they're trying to soothe themselves because they have something good and, and they're just, you know, calm down, kid. Yeah, we're going to hope that he calls you. And you're just calming yourself down. You're soothing yourself. So look for those things. Now, it can be a nervous tick in somebody that means weakness. Again, all these things you're going to have to figure out as you're playing. But what I'm giving you is generics. All right. Generically speaking, this is what that means. Now, something else you watch for. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. But my leg is jigging. Okay. I'm getting that knee up and down, up and down. I'll overcompensate. You can see it. Right. But you've been sitting at the table and you're just jigging that leg up and down, up and down. Your knee is just going like this. You got nervous energy. You sitting there, got four kings, man. And you're just like, oh, shit. So that's the same thing as soothing or whatever. You're getting some of that energy out. You know, you're jigging your leg. Also, watch this one, too. Watch the hands. You know, somebody that's shaky hands, man. They can't believe they just flopped a four of a kind. They got two kings. They flopped two kings. They can't freaking believe it. And their hands, and I'm overdoing some of this stuff because I think I'm pretty far from the camera. But they're, they can't, you know, you can't stop nerves. It's very, very difficult. But they're, you know, they're just like Don Knott, shakiest gun in the West. You know, when them nerves are cooking, generally, again, that's a good sign. They got something uh, very good, some kind of a nervous tick, man. So watch out for those. Um, timing is, is this is going to go back into what I want you to do so you're not discovered. Okay, timing. For example, all right, you're sitting here with your cards. Do you look at them both at a time? Or do you go one, one? It doesn't matter which one you are. Just do it the same way every single time, okay? Get in a rhythm. Get in a cadence, okay? So here's your chips like so. Let's say you've got your <coughs> chip on top, okay? And you take that off. Maybe you look at them one at a time. It might, in your head, it might sound something like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Look. All right? Cadence. All right? Because here's what you have to watch out for. All right? Let's say, um, you know, I have something good. I might go. Look at them both at the same time, drop them real fast, call. Well, I, as soon as I pick up on that, that's going to let me know when you do that, you have, you are very strong because you got out of cadence. 
or it means you're very weak. It's going to mean one way or the other, but you got out of cadence, okay? You have to watch cadence in people. How long does it take them to bet, okay? They've looked. Say one, two, three, one, two, three. They've looked. And now they're engaged, okay? And uh, they're looking around now. They're giving you all sorts of signals, and maybe it's been 15 seconds. And they go, uh, muck them, fold. Or the same move could have been the same amount of time, could have been raised. They say it took 15 seconds. If it takes you 15 seconds every single time, whether it's 10 seconds, 15 seconds, do it the same every time. Because just as soon as you break that, you know, raise, call, and you did it faster, that means something. Okay? It either means you got good or bad, but you broke your cadence. So I want you to remember, keep the same cadence. That also goes with the amount of money that you bet. Now, remember, in the cash games, it's one, two, two, four. It's almost set for you. I mean, it's going to be the same type of bets all the time. But when you get into tournament play or no limit play, uh, now how much do you bet? It needs to almost be the same every time, okay? If you have a hand good enough to call, it's it should be good enough to raise, okay? Depending on what position you are, okay, where that button is, okay? Do you, are you in the hammer seat or are you in the first seat? But anyway, that even doesn't matter. It's all about uh, your amount, amounts that you bet tell people things, okay? So generally speaking, if you're in a no limit and, and you do a first raise, you know, maybe it's three times blind. So say the blind is $25. So if you raise 75 or bet 75 on your first initial bet every single time, then they can't figure you out if you're weak or strong based on your bet. But what if when you're strong, you bet three times? Every time, and then all of a sudden, you bet a whole shitload of them. That means something. Whether it means good or bad, it means something. And somebody's going to watch you until they figure it out. And once they figure it out, you're toast. Okay? Just remember, they're watching you too. Just like you're watching them. Okay? Okay. Uh, the next one that I really like, watch out for overacting. Overacting. You know, they might engage and start talking to you, you know, and you just raised them, you know, and they might say something like this. Well, I'm going all in, you know, uh, I got, I got money. I got more than you think, or they say something to that effect, or maybe somebody across the table, oh, you're going to call them. Well, you know, or what if you lose? Well, I got more where that came from. They're acting confident, but they're overacting, you know, like, oh, yeah, this, I got this one, you know, yeah, you better get out of this hand, boy, I'm going to, I'm going to get you, it's just overacting, generally when they overact like that, it's in a position of weakness, okay, it's in a position of weakness, so you got to sort of listen to them. Uh, I know Daniel Negrano, one of his favorite things, when you see him play, he's talking. He's talking a lot. And the reason why he talks a lot, he's trying to get you to talk. And if he could get you to talk, he's going to try to pick up your tails based on what you say and how you say it. He's a master at that. Uh, so just so, because somebody's chatty doesn't mean they're weak or strong. You have to figure it out. But overacting generally uh, is a sign of weakness, and when you're sitting there and not saying much, you know, a lot of times that means you're strong, you know, uh, overacting, I'm all great, versus sitting there, okay, watch out for this overactor too, watch this one, a 
overacting that like it's bad, like, uh, like, whoa, is me. Uh, you see that generally for these non skilled players, when you see that overacting like they got something shitty. Uh, again, I'm overdoing this stuff. Some of this stuff is subtle, like, you know. You see that generally it means they're they're very strong. Okay, they're very strong. They're just trying to make you think that they're not. Uh, and you can tell it because they're over acting. So watch out for those over actors. Um, let's see here. Oh, watch out for their distractions. Okay. First, I'm going to go back. Before I get into distractions, I want you to see this sort of thing. All right, so here it comes. The button's over here, and, and people are going around. The person that checks his hand before it even gets to them, watch them, because they'll generally tell you, and you may have seen yourself do this stuff. You're checking your hand. You're waiting for the decision to get to you, and what do you do? You put your hands down, and you almost go forward with it. You know, you put your hands down, and go forward with it. I hope you guys can see that on camera. I'll back up. You got your hands down. You're just getting ready to fold. So you're almost pre-folding. Watch people that do that. It's subconscious. They don't even really know they're doing it. They get their hand, you know, check. Check, and they got them pushed out here already just because they're getting ready to pre fold. Versus, you know, it's, it's going around the, it's going around the circle there. They look at their hands and they pick up chips before it's their turn. There's like, they're so excited they can't get ready. They're ready to bet now before it even gets to them. Most poker stars will not even look at their hand until it's their turn for that reason. Okay, for that reason. All right. Uh, so watch out for the distractions, too. If somebody looks at their hand, you know, they're looking at the football game, or maybe they're flagging down the waitress, hey, honey, uh, yeah, I need whatever. That means they're disengaging. From the hand, you know, they're looking at the TV. Hey, uh, yeah, I need a drink over here. That means this hand is shit. I'm disengaging from it. Let me do something I need to do. Check my phone or whatnot. I'll still remember, a good smart player can use that oppositely too. And you, again, I say this a lot on this video. You have to figure out which one it is. I'm saying generically, when they disengage, they're looking around. You know, uh, that's a sign of weakness, okay? Um, I told you about the pre-float. Um, oh, okay. How, my, how many of you ever done this? You check your hand, okay? You make a bet, all right? Then it goes to this guy, and he goes, I raise. And it's almost if you, you double check. Like, you have to make sure that your hand, most of the time, that, I mean, this one is, it could be good or bad. You just don't know. Sometimes when people double check, they've got a strong hand. Somebody's raising them a big amount of money. They just want to make sure they got them fucking aces. Well, I saw them five minutes ago, but I want to just make damn sure I still have them because I'm fixing to put in 10 grand type of thing. You know, or if they, another thing too, and I don't want to ramble here. If they look, and then they're looking at the cards out here, generally they're trying to see if I can make something of this stuff. Like I've got a 4-2 in my hand, right? And I'm going, eh, can I make it straight out of that? Watch them eyes now. That's another tell. Eyes. Squinty is distressed. You know, this little, these sockets, I don't know what you call them, but the more relaxed you are, like, hey, brother, what's going on? The more relaxed are, the more confident you are, okay? Versus squinting, you know, a wrinkled brow, looking, 
usually is weak. It's less confident. Little stuff like that uh, is really, really important. Um, oh, uh, I mean, one of my last things uh, that I'm going to tell y'all tonight. Remember that guy that's talky, talky, talky? Really, really watch it. When somebody opens their mouth to chatter, there's generally a reason for it. Because we don't know nobody, you know. Every once in a while, people know each other because they're in there every day. But generally, when they're too talky, but everybody is everybody in the world has heard this one. Um, I I don't think you got nothing, boy. I don't think you got nothing, man. I don't think you have anything, boy. It's a sign that's telling you he's weak, too. I don't think you got nothing, man. I'm going to call you. In other words, he's saying, I ain't got shit, but I think you got worse shit. Okay? Watch out for that guy. You want people talking. You, I mean, and that's what I'm going to leave you with on this video. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of tells. I could probably do a, a part two in just tells. I just wanted to go over 10, 11, 12 of them real quick, the more common ones. But talking is a huge one. You know, uh, that's why lawyers tell you to shut your mouth. Answer the question, yes, no, yes, no. Not, don't elaborate in the courtroom. Well, you know, I would... I went down there. Well, what time was it? Oh, it was about 10 minutes after five. Now, wait a minute. You said a little while ago that it was five minutes and they start attacking you because they listen to everything you say. You might not think they're listening to you, but when you're in those big uh, big games, they're listening to you and they're trying to pick, pick, up, pick up on you. And I'm going to leave you with one thought that Matt Damon said in the movie Rounders. And then I'm going to call this video. If you don't know who the sucker is in the first 20 minutes, the sucker is you. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate it. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Uh, maybe consider subscribing, but the best thing you can do for me is share this video. Share this video to anyone that you think this channel will help. So until the next time, be great.